the main thing we're going to talk about in these first couple of exercises today is uh, arc surfaces or curved surfaces. And you may remember some of the exercises from the summer, particularly the one that had like the face that looked almost like a totem pole and you were stretching it across surfaces. Uh, that was pretty challenging. We're going to do that freehand as opposed to the technical drawing today. Um, but really before I begin, let's just break down, we've already done this quite a bit, but just sketch out an ellipse. Again, what I want you to do with the sketchbook, the reason why I have the sketchbook as a background on this, uh, as a template, is so that you try and sketch these things at basically about the same scale and proportion that I'm sketching. But just, just roughly sketch in an ellipse. And I'm going to do this in red, of course, uh, you know, if you don't have multiple colored pencils, um, don't worry about it. But an ellipse, basically, it's never a constant arc. If you think of a pure arc, it's just, you know, a component of a circle. It's got a consistent radius. Um, this ellipse is always either, and I'm going to draw this in red, it's either accelerating, right? So it means that arc is getting tighter and tighter. It's either always accelerating or it's decelerating, which means it's, it's going from a smaller kind of arc radius to a smoother one <coughs> and that may be quite obvious but it's something that when you are sketching in perspective and you're drawing an arc or a surface or a curve you really want to think about, uh, very rarely are you going to draw something in perspective that is a pure circle and a pure arc. If you're drawing an arc or if you're drawing a curved surface or you're drawing a circle, a circle is an ellipse, a cur curved surface is going to be probably a part of an ellipse. Um, and so just to, to show you how you might use one of these tools like a French curve, this French curve is basically always accelerating or decelerating. And so I want you guys, I, I'm going to cheat, I'm going to use this template, but I want you to just draw this, a shape that's very similar to this one. In the middle of that page in your sketchbook. And if we look at this shape, it's doing the same thing. It's, you know, if, is it accelerating or decelerating right here where I've got my arrow, that red arrow? Hmm? Yeah. Everybody understands what I mean by that, right? Is anybody kind of a little bit lost when I say accelerating and decelerating as far as a curve is concerned? Okay. Um, and really this thing accelerates all the way over to here, and then it's decelerating, right? And then it picks back up, etc. And so, if you're drawing a curve, if you want to uh, apply nice line work, um, do three line weight, and you want to use tools, make sure you're using your tools in the right way. And so, we'll talk about how that comes into play, and we'll give you a couple examples in just a minute. Okay, so lastly, let's draw another down here at the bottom of this page. Let's draw another couple of ellipses. The degree doesn't really matter, but I want you to draw basically what a, 
a cylinder. A really thin kind of cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and establish my perspective. So this is going towards the right vanishing point, just as we talked about and was on the test the other day. This is going to go towards, if I find that cord in there, which this line is messing me up just a little bit. If I find that cord, that'll go towards the left vanishing point. And what I want to do is I want to take the left kind of corner of the cylinder and just kind of block it off. And so for just a second I want you to uh, darken in just this front left portion of the cylinder. like so. And if we follow, everybody look up at the screen for just a second. I'm going to draw this in blue for a second. So I've got this, uh, this line that's running through the center of my circle, cylinder. And if I pull it down, that should be the center of that surface. I'm going to do it in black now. So this line right here represents the center of that surface. And so there's a few things to pay attention to here. One of those is just look how much of this front half of that surface we see compared to the back half, right? So again, this might remind you of that exercise this summer. But I see a whole bunch of this and I see very little of that back side. And this comes into play a lot when you're sketching um, in perspective. Okay, so now let's take, uh, let's carry this point right here over to the opposite side. So going towards that right vanishing point, let's find where it intersects. Let's take this point back here, let's carry it over to the other side. And let's lop off, or let's just draw a line that represents kind of a mirror of at least that top portion of the cylinder. And what I want to do now is we're looking at this face right here. Let me zoom in a little bit, make sure everybody can see this pretty good. And if I find the center of this surface, my center is a little bit off right there, but that's okay. If I find the center of this front right surface and draw a line straight down and cut it in half, that's just a flat surface. But I, what I want to do here is I want to draw a, um, a curved surface that is concave rather than convex. And so I'm going to take that center point right here. I'm going to just carry it back maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. I'm going to move that point back to there. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line down. And this is all construction, but that's just a little a little rectangular surface in there. And the point I wanted to make is I wanted to find that point. And what I want to do is think about if I'm gonna put a curved surface in here, uh, going from point A through point B to point C. And I want to think about how that accelerates or decelerates. If I'm going from the left side, A through B to C, is it going to decelerate or accelerate going over there? What's that? Say it a little bit louder. It's going to decelerate. So whereas this convex surface as I get further away from me, it 
accelerates going back. This one is kind of the opposite of it, and so it's going to decelerate as it goes around. This is going to be very subtle, but it stands out when you miss it. And the one other thing you can look at is I can draw a line going towards that right vanishing point at both of these points. And when I sketch in my curve, I want it to hit that point tangent to that line. And that's kind of the key of, of most of this stuff. So it's going to start out with a lot of curve and it's going to smooth out just a little bit as it rolls around. And again, it should be tangent to that line there. Let me do that again on the bottom. I mean, it's almost a copy-paste situation. This one is accelerating as it's coming towards me. This one is accelerating as it's going away from me. So basically, the opposite is true for convex and concave surfaces. And so the other thing to kind of pay attention to here, we, we have the center line of our surface. If we bring that down and we look at how much of these surfaces we see on this concave surface, I see a lot more of the, the, the surface that's further away from me, the half of this that's further away from me. So just go ahead and finish in. I want you to, to draw a very similar, actually mirror that curve back here. So find that center point back there, bring it in. And I want you to draw a curve right here. It goes tangent through that, that midpoint. And it should accelerate as it goes past. And then fill in the rest of this. On this one, go ahead and just hatch in a little bit of shading on this surface right here, just to help our eyes see the intended uh, line work that we've got. So we've just kind of created that. And so I, I just want to emphasize, I'm just gonna make a, I'm gonna take a circle, which would give me a pure arc. And if I put that circle, it's pretty close. If I put that circle right here, that would go through these three points. It's tough to find it. But if I just drew a pure arc through those three points, if I drew a pure arc through those three points, that would look extremely awkward, right? Um, and that's a little bit of a challenge that some people run into. They're like, well, I know that this curve should do something special, but what should it do? And that's the whole point of this exercise. And we'll go through a couple of examples and apply that in uh, just a minute.